Oh, we're scaring everyone. I love it. I just love scaring everyone. One thing I'm not sure if I mentioned, but the house right next to Agatha's, there's actually a fortune teller. You know, maybe I should show that, because I have, like, rupees to burn, but who knows. I'll do it later. So yeah, this is the one place you can actually go in as a wolf. Egads! Wolf! Hey, you idiot, don't come over here! I chew! I finally get my canine allergy under control, and now, ha, I, I chew, uh. Chew, be gone, and... Ah, that's pretty funny. But you can't play the game as a wolf, so it's not really much point. Other than just an interesting little Easter egg. Oh, no, not... Yeah. We gotta warp, because you, you don't need to be out of line of sight to warp as a wolf. So, to the mirror chamber. Yep, there's not some big quest we have to do before this dungeon. Well, I guess there is. Doing the other dungeons, but... Yeah. I mean, it's not really a dungeon, but, I mean, it is. So, here we go. You automatically transform into a human. Looks kind of weird in the blue clothes, but, oh well. It's still Link. Like Midna says, it doesn't matter how you dress it up. Right? Although, I'm sure that wasn't really what she was talking about. And the chain just crumbles. And something falls, and... The mirror projects images, horrible images. No, it just opens a portal. Some call our realm a world of shadows, but that makes it sound unpleasant. The twilight there looks like holds a serene beauty. You've seen it yourself as the sun sets on this world. Bathed in that light, all people were pure and gentle. But things changed once that foul power pervaded the world. It was all our doing. Oh, that wasn't mid though. We overestimated our, our abilities as sages and attempted to put an end to Ganondorf's evil magic. I hope you can find it in yourself to forgive our carelessness. Oh, Twilight Princess. What? So, you knew? Hmm. Yeah, so Midna is the real... She's the real... Royal... Figure of the Twilight. Which is why the game's called Twilight Princess. Which is really weird, because... In the last few Zelda games... The name of the game has been some item. In this game, it's a figure. So really, the game's named after Midna, which is... I mean, she's a major character, obviously, and a fan favorite of many, but... So, there's a few shadows. It's all coming together. That's some princess, right? <laughs> so yeah, I guess the reason why she called Zelda Twilight Princess is like some people thought Zelda was the Twilight Princess or whatever. I don't know, probably a lot of speculation. I wasn't a Zelda fan for that long. So that's when I found you. That's why when I found you, I thought I could use you. Yeah, remember when we saw her? So Midna was just using us the whole time. But, of course, along the way, she fell in love with us, or, yeah. She didn't care what happened to the world of light. I should be reading this. But after witnessing the selfless lights that Princess Zelda and you have gone to, your sacrifices, I know now that in the bottom of my heart that I must save this world, too. There's no other way. If we can just defeat Xanth, the curse on me will dissolve, and we may be able to revive Zelda. Alright, so let's beat him. Let's go. So this, it kind of...
kind of gives you a final dungeon of the game mentality, but it's not. This isn't the final area of the game. But it's a, it's a big area, so let's go. So now we're in a city of Twilight. How very cool. Palace of Twilight. And if you check your map, oh, I accidentally pressed one. Oh wait, no, never mind, I didn't. It, it, one is the map, it's Midna. Can I ask you one last selfish favor? Regardless of what my reasons have been, I once abandoned this world. I left behind the Twilight, those who would follow me, who considered me their ruler. Even now, as they remain here suffering, they believe that help will come for this world. But if they were to see that the only help for them was a hideous little imp, don't you think they'd feel let down? It's only for a little bit longer. Do you mind if I continue to hide as your shadow or your human form? I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. I like you with me. Um... So yeah, as you can see, this is a dungeon. It's not nearly as long as the last one, but it's still pretty long. So if you run up to him with your sword, then it says, Wait, this guy isn't an enemy, Link. They might look different, but they're inhabitants of this world. They're my people. Sam, how could he? Alright. And I don't really think that these people care if you transform into a wolf. So, it's too far of a jump. I believe you can glitch that with the boomerang long jump. But over here, there is no such thing. So this is the door that we go in first. This is a pretty cool place, but eventually it just starts to become monotonous. Oh well, I guess I do like it better than the last dungeon. I mean, I don't hate this place. It's actually pretty cool. Man, there had to be a dungeon in the Twilight world. And listen to that, we got our old Twilight music back. Remember Midna says, was that the last of the Twilight we'll really see? Well, no. So even though we're not a wolf, we're not collecting shadow tears, it's still technically Twilight. And I don't really know if that counts as fire, but I'm taking this off. Oh, I'll just use it. We got a hundred of them now. Now that's a new enemy right there, that's called a Zant Mask, and I think you can use the shield attack to bounce his stuff back. Yes you can, and that's what stuns him, and then you can beat him. So in this dungeon you'll see that the, the item that you got from last dungeon is actually hardly obsolete. You used the double claw shot very much in this dungeon. Starting off right here. Oh, we needed a key. What am I thinking? Well, going here. And this stuff turns you into a wolf. Wait, be careful. This black fog is made up of shadow crystals made by Zan. They bought up white. He's not all powerful. Yeah. So you, if you try to transform into human, no, like, the darkness is too powerful in fog like this. Remain in wolf form. That's right, you can't do this yet because you're actually not, you can't climb up there except for as a human, so that's a paradox, isn't it? So, where's the key? Well, it's somewhere. Just look in the little alcoves. It's in one of these, so it's not too hard. Well, it's gotta be in the other one, then. Or you just kill all the enemies. I think you do kill all the enemies. Yeah, that's what you do. Be prepared to do that some. Yeah, I didn't get this thing yet. The easiest way to kill this is to just wait until he shows up and do this. Yeah, one hit. Yeah, there we go. I don't know what I was thinking, that's not really a very good start, but... Oh. We get a small key, it will open a locked door, but only in this area. Of course, not like it really matters, because 
I mean, I guess in the original Zelda, you didn't have to stay in the same area, but... And you could buy keys from shops, which I still think is hilarious. Like, what if you could do that in this Zelda games? Like, how different would it make it? Who knows? Yeah, it, those guys are actually immune to arrows. So... Go in wolf form, which is... Yeah, if you go in wolf form, then nothing happens in here. Yeah. Oh. Where, where are you? And as you can see, look at that. The red color is back while you're in here. That's actually pretty cool. Actually, the red color might be back the whole area. Yeah, it is. See, it's, it's red again. That's pretty cool. Like, that's one of those things you might not really notice, but yeah. And we get two treasure chests. Awesome. And also notice that when you talk to Midna here, look at that, she's... She's, um... She's like her real form. She's not her shadow form. That's pretty cool. Like, but even like as a human, if you go out and talk to her, oh, I guess she still has a shadow there. Never mind that. I'm just noticing things that aren't there. But yeah, the red, the red hand is really true because it's orange in the white world. Um, no, it's not. No way. Well, hold, hold up. It's not. It's not orange in the white world. It's schmorange in the white in the white world. Yeah. It's Schmorange. I swear, I'm gonna use that for everything now. Oh, uh, we got little critters. Oh, oh, what's it doing? And we got the compass before the map? Huh? Well, yeah, we did. Because there's some hidden stuff here. And all this fog, so... It's good to know where some stuff is. We don't need the claw shot here, I don't think. We can just... Well, wait. Yeah, we do. Well, I've made so many mistakes here. This time you don't need to double, though. See, like, even the claw shot targets are different. This place is awesome. Yeah, there's actually another treasure chest here. So we'll get it on the way out. Because we are going to be going the way out. Now this is our mini-boss. Well, at least one of our mini-bosses. We're going to be getting more than one in this dungeon. Well, that's not the mini-boss. Oh, yeah. Remember these? It's Phantom Zant. Well, no, this, I, I was talking about Remember the Fences, but this is actually a new enemy. It's Phantom Zant. And he's gonna make some... Oh, no, Twilight enemies. Or Shadow enemies. I think Shadow actually sounds cooler when you're talking about him. So, yeah, you wait until he's making some big energy and then just run over and slash at him. But... Oh, by the way, this music is awesome. Like, when you talk about the mini-bosses all getting their own themes, this one might be the best one. Is it the same theme as Death, as, um, Death Sword from Arbiter's Grounds? I gotta look that up. Because, I mean, it's not like no bosses share a theme in this game, but this theme right here is awesome. See, just keep following them all around. It's And wait until he does this. So it's a lot like Wizards from, uh... You know, various Zelda games, and there's actually no Wizards in this one, but this guy behaves somewhat like a Wizard. Yeah, so you just keep following him until he does that. The jump strike will work, but I don't, I'm not really a big fan of the jump strike. I don't really know how many people really are. I mean, what's the point? You have to hold it for so long just to get to work. Isn't the spin attack way easier? Yeah. So, not too hard of a boss, How? although I have had trouble with it before, just because of all the little enemies and, you know, not getting there in time. So when you beat it, 
then a bunch of gas comes. So let's stay out of the way of that. It'll just slow us down. And what's this? That shining sphere illuminates this world. It's called a soul. It's like the sun of your world. Like the power of the soul is the source of life in this world. is pure power. Ah, that's why I'm going to give this. Wait, so this little thing is the sun? The sun's huge, and this is, like, this is only half as big as Link. It says a lot about the Twilight World, doesn't it? Now, this is something that a lot of people don't like about this dungeon. However, I don't actually have a problem with it. It's a little gimmick of this dungeon where you're going to get a soul. It's not the only one in this dungeon. And there are going to be these hands that chase after it. And if, if you're not holding it, then... But see, the thing is, it has to be in here. So what do you do? How do you get it up there? Well, this happens to be a claw shot of a light. Yes, so you can actually hit them with your sword or arrows and stun them to buy yourself some time. And that really helps. So yeah, it's, it's really like a... It's pretty cool, actually. You gotta be good with your aim, though. And yeah, your claw shot actually works, too, I think, to stun them. Um, the compass also lets you see where the, your souls are. Whoa, that's a lot of time. Uh, okay. So, let's have, let's finish this up the next video. Or not finish it, but 